found it. <laughs> oh, great. That's great. I'm so glad you... anyway, do you <laughs> want to head inside? Bro, this is why everyone calls you a simp. Bitches, bros, non-binary hoes. Today, we're talking about the wonderfully pitiful ships of regular show, aka Mordecai Why? If there was ever a show that captured the shipping energy of an insecure white guy, this would be it, while also giving us probably the most realistic love triangle ever. You love it, you hate it, it's a dumpster fire that warms my soul, it's shipping. Now, for those who don't know, Regular Show is about PG stoners working for minimum wage at a park as they avoid adult life. That's right, this is a show about you. This world is basically ours, till it's not, then fucking anything can happen. Basketball gods, death quando, and talking heads. Literally anything can happen in this show, but at its center, are grounded characters just trying to live their own static lives, doing what comes naturally, which for the bluebird is being terrible at dating. Like, I don't believe that Mordecai is a simp, but he's not that far removed. I'll kill you! Okay, he did kill his best friend over a girl. He got better though, so whatever, look. Mordecai is that dude who would brag about having his life together, then cry over ordering new beds off of Amazon. He's got that I'm better than you energy while being bad at his own basic ass job. He's the responsible one, but that isn't a high bar when Rigby is out there sleeping on the floor and probably getting high. The show is built around their goofy dynamic, because when they're not falling ass first into trouble, they're dealing with their own solo drama, which for Rigby is him buying something stupid, and for Mordecai, failing at being more than a friend. Would you uh like to, uh, you know, uh. This is where we hit the nightmare shipping part of this video. Because I'm only exaggerating when I say this dude couldn't ask a girl just for the date. He's so bad at dating, he thinks life runs on Sims rules where just being around the girl will make them a couple. Mordecai is your normal insecure love interest, who absolutely knows what he should be doing, but bitches out at every opportunity. This bird has feet of clay, a cardboard spine, and dead tongue. Every other part of his life, Mordecai is doing fine or better than Rigby, but when it comes to romance, he never found his wings. And it is hilarious. With the object, and emphasis on object, Margaret being the sexy lamppost he spends all his time pining for. Now, if you remember anything about this show, I promise you it's not Margaret. She truly is just a red booby for the first two seasons, before finally getting a personality that wasn't Meet My New Boyfriend. Mainly because she's not the point. She is never the point in this story. Unlike something like Star Vs where the show is actively trying to ship teenagers together, regular show is more about the comedy, aka how can we make this blue tit suffer and the absolute insane lengths this man will go to even have a chance to get some? We're talking about working long hours for concert tickets, making deals with shady businessmen, faking a band, and killing his best friend. Yeah, it's that bad. See, when I said Mordecai is insecure, I'm talking homicidally so. Like, Ruby only asked out Margaret to spite Mordecai for daring to pick a hoe over his main hoe. Rigby asked out Margaret, a magic microwave happens, and one push sends Rigby to his death. What the fuck, bro? It's all done, of course, but Mordecai killed his best friend over a girl which isn't in the bro code. But none of it matters or is it treated nearly as seriously as it could be, because this is a comedy. It doesn't fucking matter. So when people complain, oh my god, Mordecai killed Rigby, I say, it doesn't fucking matter. That's the type of exaggeration this show goes for. Plus, Mordecai isn't the only guy to kill Rigby. I'm sorry, Rigby. I'll make it up to you. But Rigby walking up and getting a date just proves how much harder Mordecai makes his life. And I know that some people are wondering, what was even the point of this ship outside the lulls? Like, what am I supposed to enjoy here? Well, that's the thing. This is kind of one of those shipping setups that will have you celebrating inches instead of miles. For the longest time, Margaret does not have a personality, but she steadily is developed into a relaxed, down-to-earth news reporter. She's just a girl trying to figure out her own life. 
and that's complemented by Mordecai slowly starting to grow into himself and be sure of what he wants. This whole thing puts you in a headspace of a guy you either want to finally see him get the girl after seasons of watching him pine over her, or you just want to see him fail so bad that he moves on. Either extreme will get you invested in the outcome, and especially with this only being a side hustle to the overall show, it works. And like, I did grow to appreciate Margaret more and more as the show goes on, mainly because their relationship feels a lot more real than a lot of the other things going Going on at the time. Like yeah, we can get longing for a girl who's too good for us, but none of us have gotten mixed messages from a princess or whatever the fuck this is. Regular show, in spite of its more fantastical elements, always built semi-realistic relationships. Margaret wasn't just the oversexed lamp the plot kept you from dating, she was the cuparista you go to every day spraying that today will be the day that you ask her out or the fun girl you hang out with, but you don't know how to take that next step. Margaret's character just kind of evolved from there. She has her own life and passions, but it all doesn't revolve around Mordecai, just like people in real life. She's not working with him, so she's not in every episode, and she has higher ambitions than being a park janitor. She had plans for her future, she took classes, she hung out with Eileen. It just created this sense of depth and that she really did have her own life and you kind of don't get that in every show like you can't tell me that marco had a life outside of what we saw on screen he shows up hangs out with star for 20 minutes then like bucky gets put in an ice coma till next week margaret is living her own life and while they may detach from mordecai in a way that doesn't lend itself to shipping i actually really appreciate the writing here i also love how there's no one magical moment where the relationship finally clicks it's a slow burn filled with progress miss opportunities and genuine fuck-ups. Like in one episode, everyone is out camping, our boy is given the dating equivalent of a layup, then dips at the last second. Or when he got trashed at the wrong club, only to end the date with cake and personal time. Things happen in this relationship, but neither of them seem to be willing to take off the training wheels. This whole will they won't they shit goes on so long that it gives both of them time to reevaluate the not relationship. There's a point where Margaret starts to think that mixed message master only likes her as a friend, while he calls it quit and signs up for a dating app and starts casually hanging out with CJ for an episode. This is only because Mordecai thought she was getting married, and so he asked the cloud girl to the movies, only to realize his mistake, and immediately ask out Margaret instead, causing CJ to hit like a hurricane and trashing the place till she gets an apology and leaves. And this all leads to Mordecai getting nothing because yeah, that would happen if you lied about having two dates and the other woman destroyed the house. Also remember CJ, she's gonna be relevant later, till she isn't. So as always, the will they won't they BS continues. Phones get stolen, repeated near death experiences. And then in season three, the finale, it finally happens. What? Your breath is really bad. Ugh. Okay, so, um, Mordecai, in his infinite wisdom, decides he needs to golden run this relationship. Again, insecure, awkward, doesn't know what he's doing. So he goes back in time to redo the kiss, because even when he gets a W, he can only focus on the L's. And in the time travel shenanigans, we get the most perfect summation of Mordecai's character as he fights himself to get the girl. But it all works out in the end. Oh, found it. <laughs> Now at this point, must be real, three seasons, a lot of nothing. I had kind of lost my patience at this point. And the only saving grace was the rest of the cast was also watching this shit and they were also over it. Ah, uh, uh, man. So naturally, this is when they got together. When she finally kisses him and after they're put into sudden death friend zone. Okay. Complaints aside, four seasons in, it finally happened. They're together. I can't be your girlfriend. Now they're not. Hope you're not a completionist, cause closure is not this show's forte. After putting them together in a quick episode of meeting the parents, Margaret drops a bomb that she's going to her dream college out of state. They break up, even though they weren't even official, causing Mordecai to fall into depression for an episode. And then he kinda just moved on. And it's ship like this is why you never really hear too much about the shipping in regular show. Like it's definitely there. But it's not some nail-biting drama or central to the plot. Ship happens for 11 minutes, then we go back to jokes and fun times and next. The impact is lessened by the nature of the show, like it's not this horrible thing, but this take and leave it approach it just makes you kind of apathetic, especially with the show's conclusion. Mordecai has seemingly learned from this experience. After going through his mandatory crazy person stuff, when he drove cross crunchy to bring back a sweater, before finally realizing that she has her own life now, so he should do the same. But thankfully Mordecai has come away a bit different. 
he's now slightly less of a passive bitch, asking out a girl he barely knows and not overthinking things as much. You might need to overthink that eyesight though, because I don't know how he didn't recognize her. CJ? Hi. Uh, ah, uh, what? Yep, CJ is back now. Now I can finally talk about Best Girl. Look, I've never been the biggest fan of will they won't they plots. I've seen it too many times and it's more annoying than satisfying at this point. I think the only time I enjoy it these days is when I'm not invested and instead I'm watching another fandom burn itself down. Which is why I love how CJ and Mordecai get together. They accidentally kiss, talk it over, become friends, and after a little push from the universe, they're dating. It just comes off as such a natural progression versus the overstretched Margaret fiasco. I'm just happy to be over and done with. And like so many shows waste time tiptoeing about how people should act after they start dating, when the answer is almost always the exact same. CJ and Mordecai are friends who just happen to be dating, and I was down for this energy. Naturally, it gets ruined later, but first let's talk about CJ just as a person and why people, me, like her. CJ is earnest, kind, and a bit of a tomboy. She plays dodgeball professionally and has a bit of a temper. Okay, a massive temper. But her default is fun and is just a good person to be around. I think what made her such a good match for Morty is that for a guy whose favorite hobby is torturing himself, pairing him up with a girl who knows what she wants is kind of ideal. The man admitted to liking her on accident. So having her be game from the get-go makes this so much easier. She also fit real well into the larger friend dynamic. No longer was this just the Mordecai and Rigby show. Now Muscle Man Skips would be going on adventures. Eileen was almost always around secretly banging Rigby. So having CJ there brought a nice sense of balance, giving us a character who wasn't already jaded to the banana shit these guys would go through. Plus he was always willing to throw hands. It wasn't anything super deep, but there was just a sense of wholesomeness that that I as a shipper needed. They both have these great moments where they support each other around their parents, letting them deal with their personal issues without solving it for them. CJ needed to put her jackass dad in place, while Mordecai, which Mordecai helped by letting her do her thing and just taking some hits. While CJ got to meet his mom, who was super embarrassing, but she didn't judge him for it, letting him get a little bit more comfortable with letting people get close to his family. While none of these were game changers, they were super sweet and solidified them as being better together than the other one. Getting together with Margaret helped Mordecai grow as a person and be more assertive. But CJ was someone he could actually hang out with. Now CJ, she never felt like she did much outside of dating Mordecai. We never get more into her personal life and what she wanted to do, which is an area Margaret definitely has her beat. Which isn't like a massive problem, because again, we're just going by chemistry here. But I really did like these two idiots together. It was cute. I mean, like, what could possibly go wrong here? It's good to be back in town. You can't do this to me. Oh, hello, love triangle. Here to ruin my day again? Yep, Margaret moved back into town, and the pot got stirred immediately. Old Mordecai came back with a vengeance, all the anxiety and overthinking included, trembling at the idea of two girls meeting at the same party, and that he'll make it awkward. Because that's the biggest fear of every socially awkward guy in his 20s. So naturally, they end up kissing. No! Oh I, my gosh. I didn't mean I to really do that. Wasn't. I just- I mean- Mordecai? Oh shit, here we go again. Awkward. Setting off a period of what I would like to call, oh yeah, she was introduced like that. The first time CJ met Mordecai, they were just hanging out, having fun, having decided not to date because depression, but she thought, I'm winning him over. But then Bird Person went crawling back to Bird Woman at the first opportunity, asking Margarita on a date CJ had already said yes to, causing Cloud Girl to storm out when she thought she had been betrayed, which she was. This early characterization of a cool girl who has a very quick temper and may vividly still remember this experience. This whole CJ kind of went away. It just felt like she had maybe grown out of it or even maybe have been retconned. Like she almost storms a couple times, but mostly in justifiable conditions. But what happens when Margaret gets back? Oh, come on! Oh, come on! <laughs> Like yeah, it's bad, and some of these occasions are like, no, I totally get that. I can see why you'd be pissed off and Mordecai kissing his ex. After feeling like you've already been used by this guy to get this girl and to have it happen again. But then that jumping to conclusions and being jealous and territorial kinda just becomes her defining characteristic. And it got super old super fast. 
Like this is kind of where the fun and games just stopped for me. The whole rest of the cast felt like they were dancing around in this whole situation. Mordecai is fighting himself, wondering if he still feels something for Margaret, and CJ is ready to jump him at the first sign that he's cheating on her. This tangle only happens for a season, and it was exhausting. Filled with incense that feel like they were ripped straight from the Avatar Tries to Do Romance handbook. Margaret has to lie that she has a boyfriend to keep CJ from killing her. He's that's the character CJ is now. Then when Margaret finally comes clean an episode later, CJ is still being territorial, accusing her of lying to be close to Mordecai and still having feelings for him. You still have feelings for Mordecai. I do. Sorry. I just wanted to start over. Seems like everyone always wants to start over. Why don't you guys just get it right the first time? I mean, yeah, CJ was right, but she had to lie because you nearly fucking killed her. Like, they really committed to having a love triangle right here. And like, I'm not sure anyone was really into it. You say what you will about some of the other shows I've talked about. People were invested in that ship. Here, though, it kind of felt like it was playing for time. Naturally, this whole debacle ends not with a bang, but with an awkward proclamation that gets cut short and a sense of no closure. Mordecai, feeling the pressure that he needs to choose, being completely unsure of what to say, what to do, on top of getting grilled by Rigby about not being honest with himself, plus Rigby reveals that he's been dating Eileen for months, marking the funniest reveal in the entire show. Eileen and I are dating! <gasps> for like a couple of months now. We have matching bracelets! This plus muscle man's wedding leads to the natural conclusion of Mordecai hijacking the wedding. I don't know if there's one perfect person out there for me, but I know that for a long time I've been ignoring my gut because I didn't want to hurt anyone. But instead of saving their feelings, it's just made everyone around me miserable. You didn't even point in my direction. <laughs> CJ! Yep, that's it, folks. It's over. Maybe Mordecai was going to admit he loved CJ, maybe he would have just broken up with her. But after six seasons of false starts, at least I can finally crown a victor. That woman. Who? Yeah, Margaret and Mordecai, after all that, just day friends. They had decent chemistry as a couple, none as friends. So he ends up marrying Batwoman. Oh, and CJ? Only cameos. Never speaks again after getting dumped. So, dumped at the altar was pretty much all of CJ and Mordecai's worst tendencies on full display. Him being awkward and obtuse with how he feels, her being quick to anger and jumping to conclusions based on some valid evidence. My gut reaction with this was that Mordecai was going to break up with CJ, but on rewatch, I think that he was really trying to say, CJ, I pick you. But his delivery was so bad, he made it sound like a breakup speech. And in the end, I think it was for the best that they broke up. Their relationship tanked the second any conflict came into the picture. Like, I wanted them to be happy, but they are who the writers make them. So a fair weather couple they are. I just kind of wish CJ wasn't written out of the show. She only gets cameos from here on out. She isn't even included in the epilogue, which sucks. And with more Mordecai ending up with Batwoman, it makes a lot of these shipping episodes a bit of a drag to get through, because it didn't lead anywhere. Like this is absolutely the story of Mordecai developing as a person, living, loving, failing, till life brought him to the right person, but that doesn't make it satisfying because this show is so episodic and comedy based, meaning that the effects that these relationships have on him aren't nearly as prevalent if this was more serialized. He more or less ends the show as the same guy he started as. Leaving you here with just the jokes, which while still funny, the drama of this whole who will win the not prize lacks replay value. I can sit through and cringe through Korra and Mako because I can laugh at how utterly irrelevant he'll become, or I can be annoyed at Starko being endgame, but those shows still made me have emotions towards them, which is something I can't say for regular show. After CJ left, fuck it, as soon as they started the love triangle, I didn't really care. And while the shipping wasn't why I watched this, I'm mostly here for the characters and the comedy. There does feel like there is something lost in watching these older episodes and just thinking, what's the point? Like, they're still good, the jokes are still funny, the situations are still great. But in the back of my mind, I'm just thinking, why do I care about Margaret? She isn't in the final season. She was never really in the show once she stopped being this love interest character. CJ, gone completely. So I'm watching this for the characters and the jokes, but the character kind of just leaves. Because while I like Margaret, I never thought she was great or amazing, but to have her just be, okay, no, I'm gonna go do my own life, I'm gonna be a reporter, I'm like, cool, that's good for you. I'm not really getting any value out of it. Is this 
was always Mordecai and Rigby's story. This was about the park. The fact that she isn't dating or like becomes a more solid part of the friend group kind of just leaves this whole story being meh. It's like, cool, hi, character I know who's going to leave at season six. Like, at least with a character like Thomas, someone who was in the story for a little while turned out to be a spy. Absolute crazy shit. He was trying to steal the park with rockets. Like, his story, done and complete. There is some sense of closure there. Margaret and CJ, I don't feel that. I don't feel like there is a solid, okay, their story is ended. It just feels like it is cut off. Mordecai and Margaret have an episode where they both decide maybe we'll get together, but by the end they decide, no, we're better as friends. And then they never hang out or be friends in the show. So like, that's the thing, for as good as the finale is, so much good feeling, such a great ending. For Margaret and CJ, there is no closure. And it has that negative effect on all their previous episodes. And I actually like that Mordecai met someone later in life who shared a similar passion as him. It's not fun, it's not sexy, but it is the realistic outcome you'd see in a show like this. Because you're not always gonna meet the love of your life in high school or in your 20s. It's the realistic outcome you'd see in a show that's always treated its relationships realistically. But for the other two leading ladies, fuck it, for most of the leading ladies, they feel glossed over. Maybe I'm just bitter that my best girl got shafted and it just kinda still bums me out. But the very least I can say, at least we still had Eileen, which is something we can all appreciate. She was truly the best girl and Rigby and Eileen had the best ship. And there's just something to be said of an idiot falling in love with the smart girl about Rigby becoming the house husband. All right, this has been the Shipping and Regular Show. Thank you all for watching. This has been Sarcastic Chorus. Tell me about your favorite ships. Tell me who you think was best girl. But please, have a good one. Stay safe. Peace out.